All right, so the recording has started. So today we'll be discussing coming out as the as a Dalit by Yashika Dad. So this is a very powerful piece about a woman who uh, shares her experiences as a as a person who has not yet uh, has who has not yet come to uh, agreement with her own identity and her struggles with it. And it tells and it tells us about a story about how she comes to accept it. So uh, my initial take on the reading was that from the first few chapters was that she felt very envious of Rohit Vemula, who was able to use his identity as a as a weapon to pierce the entire social structure that he lived in. This was uh, and his death, his suicide was a very as it was an extremely move, extremely turbulent time for her because it forced her to confront her own identity. Uh, what would you guys think about this? Okay, so I think um, adding on to what you're saying, she was in fact envious of him because like we see throughout the reading then that uh, she and her family are struggling to maintain this upper caste persona, which um, at the end when she when she realizes that it, it, um, it is not something, her caste identity is not something to be ashamed of, is when she finally comes to terms with it. Um, and um, so I feel like drawing from that, then she has in this book sort of tried to create um, an environment where not just other Dalits, but also upper caste individuals who read this book can understand how the caste system works and can understand like the grave impact that it has on others. Yes, that's a that's a good point. That's that's great. But uh, another thing that really that I really uh, felt moved on by was her resolve after the fact after she heard about Rohit Mula's death, how she suddenly uh, realized what she was hiding from and how she suddenly got into the mindset of accepting it and using it to further the entire movement. Yeah, I, I just wanted to see that. Uh, I, I think it definitely served as a trigger point for her to come to terms um, with her identity and embrace it and talk about all the struggles that she's um, been through. And um, the few chapters that we went through were definitely very impactful and um, they're very moving as well, especially because um, uh, Yashika is able to bring in her own struggles and her personal narrative and add it to all the um, to break down all the traditional um, arguments that are made against like reservation and stuff. So yeah, I guess we would just uh, address a few um, of the issues that we felt stood out in the reading. Yeah, so uh, another uh, moving aspect of the reading was the entire parallels that she drew with the race struggles in America, where uh, she she related to the to the practice of passing off as a white person, which she had uh, done her entire life by passing off as a upper class upper class Brahmin. This really showed us that even in a society that we believe to be post caste, it uh, we there are still people who are trying to navigate it by uh, being someone who they are, who they are not. And also, so she um, tackles this particular issue of post caste very well. In um, like we spoke about the um, cow carcasses and the manual scavenging, right? So, like there are points when she discusses how there were protests where you see uh, Dalit communities just come together and refuse to uh, partake in activities which are just typically considered impure, and how that. Uh, that is the social hierarchy in general. So I felt like that is very interesting too. Yeah, definitely. And also another very interesting part of the reading was uh, when she tells us that her earliest memories of her mom was of uh, when her mom was also trying to pass off as an upper class upper class Brahmin woman by just by t explaining to people how she was a Brahmin girl who married a Dalit husband. That also felt something that uh, 
that we uh, that I am I am pretty out of. I have never experienced something like this. But it was really refreshing to uh, and really eye opening to read someone's experiences like this. Yeah, definitely. There are a lot of instances that um, throughout the reading where she talks about how she, in order to fit in, uh, uh, or just by uh, because of um, having fluent English, people would assume that she was an upcast uh, person, whether it was in um, university or with her roommates. But eventually, like you know, people um, start to figure it out when um, they see her um, mom in um, tattered clothes, and then even her roommate. One of her roommates talks about how she should be doing more to help her mother. So um, we uh, we can see that there's an uh, immense amount of guilt, especially that Yashika feels from um, feeling like an um, outsider and not being able to help her family as much as she um, wanted to. Do. And um, an an interesting um, point that. Uh, we noticed was that her mother not only has to face um, patriarchal oppression outside the home, but inside as well from her family and from her um, um, husband's side of the family. Yeah, so I feel like this thing that you spoke about, a lot of this pressure was not just casteist, it was a lot of it was gendered as well. So because not just for Yashika's mother, but for her as well, because she was a girl, she felt, you know, the need to constantly help out and to support her family. So um, there are instances, sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, so like how there are these instances where even when she's achieved things, like she has, um, she's become secretary in school, she feels the need to hide it for, from her family because she doesn't want to add to their pressure of like, when they're facing financial constraints that they should be forced to celebrate something when they don't have the means for it. And, but also from this, what I also took was that um, coming back to the passing off point, uh, her, her entire life, she pretended to be who she wasn't. But towards the end, I think towards the end of chapter five, when she, when we, uh, when we get to know that about her, job in the call center and a job as a writer for a, as a ghost writer for a for an artist it also did help her in a way when she when she was able to pass off as someone who she wasn't uh, and she were and she was very smart in utilizing it for her own benefit so that is something that i really admired in her because uh, it showed her that showed us it showed us that she was actually hustling for her for her work Yeah, definitely. So, like, I mean, she had no choice but to um, be able to adopt um, the passing, passing identity because otherwise, like, she wouldn't be able to get through the systems and get where she is right now. Um, if I had to talk about any sort of personal experiences or uh, personal examples that I can relate to the reading. The one thing when she uh, she frequently talks about um, the classism that students face in um, institutions like IIT Madras. And uh, so my brother recently joined the college and I was having a discussion with my parents about how bad um, uh, discrimination is because like one, you have to uh, deal with the um, reservation aspect and most people are generally against reservation. And we have these sort of conversations in Jindal as well. And uh, people are generally talking about how you, it should be based on economic uh, in, uh, economic background and not on caste background. So yeah, I told my um, father about the sort of experiences that I've heard about and read about. And he just straight up went like, no, like um, my brother hasn't heard of any of it and like he doesn't face it and we've never heard of it, so it doesn't exist. But yeah, it's just, it, it just sort of brings about the fact that when people say that like they don't see color or caste, that it, you just know that that's when you have privilege and you're able to um, distance yourself from it and think of yourself as invisible. Whereas in reality, you are very visible. Yeah, so that's just one example that I could sort of think of. What about you guys? That's a that's a great point. Uh, 
I personally did not have many uh, personal uh, experiences that could, that could be related to this reading because uh, I have never been exposed to it. But uh, one thing that really that really got my attention was the entire beef debate, uh, where uh, where peop where it was related to your caste. Mm -hmm. But uh, so recently on Twitter, I read this one tweet where this this person said that she by mistake used her her roommate's utensils to eat chicken in it, and uh, she and she and she apologized for it and she said and she offered to clean it and give it back to her, but the roommate uh, denied it and she said that now she can never use it, and this in the, this incident made her realize that the entire uh, debate about whether we should eat eat chicken eat beef slaughter cows everything was not based on animal welfare or wasn't based on saving the environment it was rather rooted in the deep in the notion of purity based on your caste so this was one thing that uh, that related to this this was one instance that related to this reading okay so for me it was a relatively more um personal book in the sense that i i feel like um my social economic setting is very similar to Yashika. That's I come from a Dalit family, which is uh, a lot of us are uh, in the government service. So I have seen this a lot where um, because we live in a certain kind of house or we, we wear certain kind of clothes or we go to certain kinds of schools, uh, people just assume that we are upper caste. And then they will try to bring up that argument against reservation with us. And they'll say things like, oh, um, any time that they find out um, about my caste identity or about my family's caste identity, they will just say, oh, you don't look Dalit, which goes to show um, how Dalits are portrayed in popular media or just the notion that we have of them. And also how we believe that simply because there is a class privilege, you are um, isolated from the casteism which exists or just any form of discrimination. So I felt like that is very interesting to me. That's a that's a great point. It also plays into the entire concept of othering about how people have just uh, made up sketch about about what a typical Dalit person should look like, and if you and if you don't fit into it, you're not it, and the, that entire debate also goes on over here. Yeah, so like it's it's a very um, important book that way to understand how casteism works in a more urban setting and like. The context of it has changed, but the discrimination itself still remains. Great. Uh, so, on uh, do you guys have any ending remarks on this uh, on the reading? No, I think um, it's just it's been a great read, uh, very relatable, very eye opening. Nothing other than that. Personally, for me, I uh, I was not aware about a lot of issues that were presented in the reading and it gave me a lot uh, a lot to think about especially last night when i was actually when i was reading the 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 book it felt that uh, there's an entire world out there that i have not been exposed to and it really encouraged me to look into it more and especially the entire ruvir pemula suicide which uh, sent me down a youtube rabbit hole where i researched a lot about him and all of his struggles and what he accomplished after his death Uh, yeah, for me, I guess it um, sort of brought to life um, uh, narratives beyond just like reservation and merit, you know, beyond just sitting in a classroom and a bunch of like privileged upper caste people debating about whether reservation should exist or not. So, yeah, the um, personal narrative really um, changed. Um, yeah, I, I, I just like exposed me to a lot more than I, I was aware of. Great, great. Okay, so I think that's that's enough for today. That we have touched our time limit. Uh, it was a great conversation. Thank you, guys. I'll be ending the recording now.